What is going on guys, Brown here, welcome to the start of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode. We've got the boring stuff to do first, I'm going to be calling it my team the same name as I did on F1 2020, um, Brown GP. I've gone, I'm just going to skip through this quickly because this is the third time I've done this because I haven't been happy. Um, with the liveries, so we're going to choose Marcus Armstrong. These are the, liv the liveries I came up with. So we've got this black and red one. This is the first one I came up came up with, which is all right, a bit bland. I did do a race with it, and then I wasn't happy, so I started the career mode again, and then I went to this orange livery because of. I was trying to think of a colour that wasn't on the grid and I completely forgot about McLaren. So this is kind of a bit like the 2017 McLaren design in a way. So I binned that off and I went into this third design which is the one we're going to be using for this first season of the career. It's also like my YouTube logo as well, all the same colours got the grey, the black, a bit of white and the red as well and I really like it, let me know if you like it in the comments down below. Right so our team colours are going to be a light grey just so because half were grey so that's missing off the grid now and you can see our um, driving suits there and this is the calendar, we go from Bahrain to Spain, Monaco, Baku, Canada, then we have a break and go Austria, Silverstone, then it's Belgium, Zamvor, Monza, and then Singapore, Japan, America, Mexico, Brazil, round the season out, out in Abu Dhabi. I've left all the things on default apart from the team acclaim, because I just wanted because I wanted it to, it to be easier for me to level up the acclaim and get some more sponsors. But there's an interview now with Will Buxton and I'll be back after it. Hello folks and welcome to this, a very special edition of Paddock Pass. As you can see, there's no pit lane behind me, and as you can hear, no roar of engines. And that's because they've set me free from the F1 paddock to escape here to the countryside and to the headquarters of Formula One's newest team. Now, it's not every day we get to pull back the curtain and look behind the scenes at an F1 team. Rarer still that we get to talk not only to the team owner, but also the team's lead driver. But what makes this place extra special is that the owner and lead driver are one and the same person. Now it's been an interesting 12 months and we all know a number of the regulation changes which were due to come into effect this year have been delayed until next. Some though are still seeing the light of day, amongst them the all important budget cap which gives some of the smaller teams a little further down the order potentially the opportunity to compete with the bigger teams. Good for them but great for us as viewers. But what does our new team owner think about these new rules? Do they see them as a challenge, a hurdle that needs to be overcome? Perhaps they see them as an opportunity to disrupt the status quo, a chance to come out swinging and to carve their name into Formula One history. Well, I had the opportunity to ask them these very questions just earlier today. And here's what they had to say. Well, first of all, thanks so much for inviting us here today. It's been wonderful to see behind the scenes. Uh, as you might expect, I've got about a million questions, so let's jump straight in. It's been a long time since we last saw a team owner take their own car onto the track, and the sport's changed enormously in the intervening years. How are you going to handle the responsibilities of both managing and driving for a Formula One team?
Let's talk about your teammate. Now, it's clear they're excited to have signed with you, but tell me, what is it that you think they bring to the team? So you've obviously been putting a lot of work into the car. I know it's early days, but how do you expect it to feel out there? Most of the other teams can boast years of experience in Formula One. Where do you see the opportunities to make those vital performance gains you need to put you within reach of the other cars? Ultimately, your success this season is going to come down to whether you can take positions from the other drivers. What is it about your car that's going to give you that edge in those battles? And finally, with so many specialist departments working together here at your headquarters, and with such an important deadline coming up, who's getting that coveted teacher's gold star? Which group do you feel the most proud of? Well, thank you so much for your time. I've been wonderful to get an insight from you and of course to see around the headquarters. Thank you for today, really appreciate it. And thank you all at home for watching as well. We'll see you very soon. So there's our interview with Buxton. Um, it helps us with different departments. I've turned the icons on as well. So we'll see down the line which ones. There's a lot of drivers I'd like to sign, but this is the car launch I'd like to sign Johnson Button Senna Hamilton I wish, I wish you could have more than one team and if they can move teams as well I'm not too sure but we've got the boring part out of the race out of the way let's go into qualifying first qualifying of this series and we cross the line it's not going to be great. I'm not expecting it to be great. And we did go for another run. And I spun, as you can see there. And so we did, we went for one more. Oh, going down the back straight now into the final corner. Can we improve her up by quite a bit? Going up to the line now. Can we improve? Yes, we can. And, uh, and let's go into the race. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. We go racing today around 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit, with 15 corners and two good passing opportunities into turns one and four. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left tyre into the tricky braking zone of turn 10. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Ricardo, Verstappen, Sergio Perez and Sainz, Vettel, Leclerc, Stroll and Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Gasly, Esteban Ocon and Norris. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Raikkonen, Brown, Marcus Armstrong and Mick Schumacher. Giovinazzi, Russell. Mazepin, 
and Nicholas Latifi. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So it's like 16th into the race we go as the five lights come on. It's lights out and away we go. The front end get away well as we get to that one. Red Bull and Max Verstappen. We're going to try this quite a lot of dust in the background. Because we're going to go to the inside and send it down the inside. Can we gain some places? Yes, we can. We're ahead of um, one of the Alpines and we're going to go round the outside of the other Alpine of Estevan Ocon. The side by side down at the front. <laughs> we're going to try and gain some more places, but we can't. And we are up into P12. So you can start there the Alpine. Trying to go down our inside. We hold the line round the outside just. But they're still there now. They're on, their in on our inside. We try and hold the position round the outside, but we lose out to the Alpine. And they're side by side behind. That's Pierre Gasly and Fernando Alonso. As we can see there, flooding through. So we've managed to get up into P12 and P14. That's not bad, and we're throwing ourselves a hat right into the ring. We've lost out there. As Ocon gets past Yuki Tsunoda, and there goes Fernando Alonso. Down our inside, we, we let him go wide. Try to cut him back, but we couldn't get the exit that I needed to be able to do that and now we're gonna swap Fernando Alonso the dummy we're gonna go alongside and we stay ahead off the Spaniard down into turn one Lando Norris is side by side with and Daniel Ricciardo yes it is Lando Norris Lando Norris side by side with Pete Gasly and gets the job done on the Frenchman as well Fernando Alonso though Putting the pressure on us, it's not easy to to drive when you've got a, a double world champion and someone experienced as Fernando Alonso breathing down your neck. And there he is going down our inside. This is an incredible camera angle. And we're side by side and Fernando Alonso gets the job done. But we're starting to crack like an egg as we've gone wide again and down our inside. Lando Norris now, he's got past us, we're going to try and hold it to the outside but that McLaren is too quick in a straight line and McLaren is ahead and we've lost two positions there and behind us is now Pierre Gasly who's going to be quick in that Al Alpha Tower route, nearly caused it to a Rosso then, it's back down the inside of Lando Norris we go, we're not letting Lando go we're going to try and cut him back, but we've got, we've got a good exit, it looked like Gasly might have a go. We go back to the inside of Lando Norris, down the inside of Lando Norris into turn four. We get the job done, but Lando cuts us back through now, down the hill, through the S section. Lando Norris stays ahead of us, now going down into the hairpin. Oh, what's happened? No, we've gone wide. We've spun on the curb. And what looked to be a good start, and we're going tumbling down the order. How have we spun? That's a rookie error. We're side by side with Nicholas Latifi. And from what was it, P13, we're down at the back. This is a replay of what happened through the chicane. We go right on the curb. We did well to keep it out of the barrier. But. What? Oh, we could have been on for some points. We were doing the one stop. I'm not saying we had the pace to do to deal with the Alpines, the McLaren, and the Alpha Tauri, but we've got a chance if we're there. And now we're down at the back in last place, P22. This is a replay. Big Gasly, you can just see that we just spun up the rear tyres on the curb and we spun round. I don't know how I kept it out of the barrier, I did well there, if I do say so myself. But now we're hunting down those in front because we have got some good pace on these mediums. And we're going to get past Nicholas Latifi and absolutely cruise round the outside of him. And up into 21st place. Is Latifi quick enough to have a go back at us though? No he's not. And now skipping on, we're right on the back of Nikita Mazepin. We nearly hit Mazepin there. 
And now we're going to try and go to the outside into the final corner of Nikita Mazepin. We're going to try the, un to the cut back again like we did on Fernando Alonso. But this time we've got the traction. We're side by side. But that has compared to this really draggy um, default um, default car can't remember what it's called um, FON car is rapid in a straight line but one lap later I've learned my lesson from the outside on the last lap and this time down the inside we squeeze Mazepin wide and we're up into P Twin, uh, up into P Ninth, 19 I think that is as those behind as those in front of us rather are starting to make the first stops those on the two stop as Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen the two former teammates are going wheel to wheel Ricciardo's not giving an inch neither's Max Verstappen but Verstappen is ahead of his former teammate he got very toxic when them two were at Red Bull and now they've got George Russell ahead of them and they're gonna absolutely muck George Russell because that Williams has got nothing on the Red Bull and the McLaren as, as they're coming out of the pits is Lance Stroll but George has given up on Daniel Ricciardo tried to keep his foot in round the outside and now we are right in it with the with the Ferrari and the Red Bull and we have seized our chance to go right round the outside of Mick Schumacher and we've already got, and we've also got the McLaren there as well we're side by side with Carlos Sainz and Sainz over, does overtake us there's not really any point fighting these but on the other hand there is because we've got our own battle to do here as this is the replay just had the confidence on the brakes to send it straight round the outside of Mick Schumacher nothing he could do it was boxed in by the Red Bull and that's when it it's probably one of the best moves they've done so far as we go down the inside of George Russell but George Russell cuts his back run to the grass and now this is what was so so frustrating about this point in the race I had the pace over George Russell but I was always left defending those in front so every time I got close to George Russell I was just being mugged by those on the two stop as this is Charles Leclerc and Lance Stroll wheel to wheel down the inside goes, goes Charles Leclerc Lance Stroll they holds it around the outside they're still side by side we're watching this in our mirrors as down the inside does Lance Stroll have it it looks like he might but Charles Leclerc holds it right around the outside and he's not giving up here side by side they go they're still side by side from the first corner round the outside and turn 10 goes Charles Leclerc is he gonna miss the lethal turn 11 curb yes he is they're still side by side this AI battling this year is incredible and on the exit of turn 12 it looks like Charles Leclerc has finally got the job done but he hasn't it's on the outside is Lance Stroll down the inside it goes <laughs> goes <laughs> goes Charles Leclerc and Charles Leclerc finally has to admit defeat as Lance Stroll defends as down the inside we're gonna have another look on George Russell but this is what I mean I went for a look at George Russell and I've just been mugged by Lance Stroll it was so frustrating because you can see we had the pace over the Williams down the inside and now we've got mugged by the Ferrari and we're pretty much about to through the section we go down the hill and there goes Charles Leclerc to our outside every time I got on the back of George Russell someone behind just had to it's one of the quicker cars on the two stop just absolutely breezed past me and then I was back down and had to redo it and you can see again here look I've caught the back of George Russell again and the McLaren of Lando Norris just gets in the way but now me and George on lap 13 are going to come into the pits to make our one and only stop which 
was very welcome from me. Not that the mediums were bad, just the, just the fact I could get out of the traffic and finally be able to battle George Russell into the pits though. And it's a slow stop because as you saw there, the lights went green, but then George Russell came through so it went back to red. And I saw it went green so I dropped, I dropped the clutch then had to re-engage it and go again. So that's cost us a bit of time to George Russell. But can we hunt him down and maybe even get some, some of those further up the road? But here is Antonio Giovinazzi, I think it is, round the corner and he's slowing down. Giovinazzi slowing down now for Romeo. He's slowing down and now to the race they go. I can't see, I can't see the number from that angle, I think it is um, Juvenazzi. It's, it's behind us now, Mick Schumacher comes out of the pits and he was just, he was just sat there all over the back of us when I was trying to hunt down George Russell. It's out of the pits now, this is Daniel Ricciardo coming through turns one and two and he's slowing down Daniel Ricciardo who nearly won this race in the Williams RTG is out of the Bahrain Grand Prix and is that an omen maybe he's only just come out the pits maybe did they not fasten one of the tires up tight enough so he's been forced to stop before there's a big accident with a tire going flying, or was it something um, more than that mechanical? I don't know. But coming out of the pits as we go down the inside, we get George Russell. Finally, we're able to battle George Russell, and we are up into P16, back where we started. Next up the road, though, is Sergio Perez, and it's going to be hard to catch him. But Pierre Gasly, I'm not sure what happened to Gasly because he was battling with the McLaren of Lando Norris but he's fought his way back through and past us and that was pretty much it for the second half of the race but what, what was so annoying for me looking at the track map you can see there going from turn 11 they're the two Alpines and we were battling them before we spun and they're in P4 and P5 so what could have been I'm not saying we could have stuck with them but we could have been around there if we hadn't have spun but Valtteri Bottas the most unre unrealistic thing happens in this career mode straight away Valtteri Bottas wins come ahead of his teammate Lewis Hamilton then comes Max Verstappen so it's another handbot there it's bot ham there this time though and look at this the two Alpines headed by Fernando Alonso are gonna finish in P4 and P5 just ahead of Yuki Tsunoda um, he's just sat there behind Esteban Ocon the Ocon was hunting down just in front of us at the start of the race there's Yuki Tsunoda and we are going to come round we are going to come round the final corner and head up to the line to finish right where we started alright race over take care of the car on the way in That's it for another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes.
This is your constructors championship. I don't I don't want to drag this video on anymore. It's already been going 24 minutes and we're going to be focusing on the R&D but if you have enjoyed this opening round make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.